Hey everyone, I've got a story that I wanted to share with you today. It's uh, a little video that popped up on my newsfeed and um, it really resonated with me. So scroll, 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 checking out what was going on on, on Facebook, I think it was, a few days back and this little video popped up and um, I'll see if I can find the link and actually put it into the thread. But the video is of... Uh, a couple of young men standing in a supermarket uh, and the one of the so one of the young men is a person who's working for this particular supermarket and the other is the son of uh, the person who's taking the video and there's a little bit of voiceover but the the, the video itself um, that I saw had a bit of an explanation of what was going on so turns out this particular father had taken his son into the supermarket and to be honest the the men looked like they were maybe in their early 20s um, and so this father had taken his son to the supermarket and he said you know my child is on the spectrum and so my son has a, a whole heap of difficulty leaving the house it's a real struggle for him it's a struggle for me it's usually one of the most uh, it, it's usually one of the hardest points in our day it's usually one of the most mentally and emotionally taxing things that happen as, as I take my son out to um, the supermarket or um, you know we leave the house so here's this father who's taken his son to the supermarket and he said this particular day they turned up and um, he said they were walking down the aisle and there was a young man stacking shelves and he said my son walked up to him and kind of became interested in what this person was doing and he said this young man who was stacking the shelves actually started to involve my son in the process and he allowed him and engaged with him and encouraged him to stack the shelves alongside and he said at that point I pulled out my phone and started videoing because it was just so incredible. Um, you know, usually it's so hard for us to leave the house because we're so worried about what's going to happen when we get out there um, and how difficult it's going to be. And here we are, he said, I watched my son stack shelves with this person for, um, I believe it was around about a half an hour or so, but it was, you know, this extended period of time where my son could just be a human being and kind of hang out with another guy and they stacked shelves together. And so this beautiful, beautiful video had quite rightly gone viral. Um, there's a follow-up story, which is great, around um, that young man being offered a job at the supermarket and the young man that actually helped him, his name's Jordan, he's beautiful. Um, turns out he's saving to go to college, but started a Kickstarter fund for him. Like, there's a whole beautiful follow-up story that, that goes on with that. But the reason that I wanted to share that story with you today is because it reminded me of why we do this work. Because if we are only focused on productivity and efficiency, and if we, if we only use that language when we talk about our businesses and we talk about our organizations, then we miss the opportunity for those human moments. And the human moments are what make it all worthwhile. And so if we had had a situation where Jordan's boss was entirely focused on productivity that moment of being of being human of engaging another human being of you know helping to bear some of the burden of um, stress and and all of those all of those beautiful things that, that would never have happened because we would have been too focused on the fact that well if you're not stacking those shelves quick enough then how can we be efficient as a business and move on to the next thing and it doesn't I think the thing with this is that it doesn't always come through in the way that we expect. So it's not that productivity and that efficiency focus is not because the people at the top have bad intentions. We as leaders don't have the intention to miss those moments. Of course, if you were asked, you would probably turn around and say, yes, that's valuable and you should definitely be doing that with your time. But if our employees, if our team, if our staff aren't seeing us in the moment make those decisions, the messages that they're getting around productivity, efficiency, improvement, you know, make sure that you're doing a good job and you're and you you're effective and you're efficient. What happens is that as that message sort of works its way through the organization, the way that it shows up for a lot of people is, 
I must focus on productivity exclusively to the detriment of all of those other things that might distract me from being productive. Whether or not that was the leader's intention with that message, it it's almost like we have this concept of a conflict of interest where it can be perceived or real. It's kind of the same thing with our productivity measures. Whether it's perceived or real that we want to focus exclusively on productivity, the damage is already done. And so my challenge to you today as leaders is what type of organization do you want to create? Because surely to goodness, we want to be creating those type of organizations where we can have those human experiences like these two young men had in that supermarket. We want to create a workplace where that is valued, not only by our customers, but it's valued by us as leaders. It's valued by the team. We want to create those businesses. We want to be those places where we can have that human connection, where we can actually have something outside of a simple financial and productivity measure that we're focusing on, right? That's why we do this. It's why we do our work. And so my challenge to you today is to really go back and have a, have a moment of self-reflection and start to think about what are the conversations that I've had in the past week? What were we focused on? What was I paying attention to? How might that have been perceived by the person that I was talking to? And then how does that message potentially get translated through my organization? And being conscious that we are not always focusing exclusively on productivity measures. Also that we're not exclusively focusing our conversation on productivity measures, even when we have an intent of the bigger picture. We've got to get past not only the things that are going on in the inside, because people are not mind readers, but you've got to work out how that actually translates into the way that you show up and the messages that you're giving your team. And the challenge here is what's the business you want to create? Do you want to create that business which is focused almost exclusively on the hard line quantitative, you know, we can often call it data driven stuff? Or do you want to create an environment that actually also has a way for us to have that appreciation for those human moments as they occur and to build that connection with our customers, with our team, to really start to build a place where people love to work, they feel safe, they feel supported, and we can have that human moment. Because what it boils down to is that famous old saying that people will never remember how much it cost or how much you charge them, but they will remember how you made them feel and that's what it comes down to so that's my challenge for you today go and do your self-reflection make sure that you go through run through in your head those conversations that you've had over the past week and think honestly and clearly about how you're showing up in your business the conversations that you're having the way those conversations are being interpreted and do the work to make sure that you're having a conversation that is bigger than simply productivity my name is Danielle Jones. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope wherever you are in the world, you're having an awesome, awesome day. And um, we will see you again next week. Thanks.